It's not about the hand you're dealt, but how you play the cards. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to cover something very near and dear to me, and that is a transformative journey behind the success of business owners. So today we're gonna to venture from, you know, the neon lights of Las Vegas, boardrooms and thriving businesses. Join me as I unfold a story of risk, realization, and a rebirth, extracting invaluable lessons every single step of the way. And guys, this is a little story about me. You know, my, my, my parents loved uh, to have a good time, inter entertain, and part of that entertainment was the game of poker. Uh, my parents loved it. They were avid players, whether it was, you know, local table games, at, you know, at people's homes. Or, uh, of course, going to, you know, Las Vegas. So this is my story and the invaluable lessons I learned along the way. I grew up in an environment where gambling was a form of uh, entertainment, as I mentioned earlier. Nurturing the beginning of an ambition fueled by a, the allure of easy money. I think it was about third grade when I realized, you know, what was going on. That this is a game, but there's real money being exchanged. And this is, by no stretch of the imagination, was this you know, mo Monopoly, this started really hitting home for me real quick. And boy, w did I love it, right? I was just attracted to the stacks of, you know, usually there was four players, right? And everybody had, you know, bigger, small stacks. And I was just, I could, these people played from like, you know, late morning all the way to early morning, right? Until there was, you know, one person standing and I was hooked on it. It was really exciting for me as a kid uh, to see all that money. And, you know, the message here is your environment shapes your ambitions. In business, it's critical that you surround yourself with, you know, risk takers and innovators that can inspire you to make bold moves. But it's, cr it's crucial to dif differentiate between, you know, calculated risks and sheer gambling, right? So risk is not jumping off the cliff, right, without some kind of safety net. It's, it's prudent risk, right? Um, but we also don't want to be too, you know, boxed in where, you know, every day looks like the same day and the opportunities are, are zero. But we want to make sure that we're not stacking up our money and, uh, you know, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. That's a bad way to run a business. Your environment shapes your ambitions. In business, it's really wise to surround yourself with those risk takers, innovators that are going to inspire you to make those big moves. Now, be careful and stay clear of the complacent and negative naysayers. There's way many of those around, you know, good people, I'm sure, but those people want to keep you right where they're at, right? Because they don't want any pressure. They don't want to see, you know, their circle scaling and what about them? So, you know, our, our circles will change, right? It's like when you're at a poker table or, you know, a crap table. For me, my game was craps. And when you started playing, you know, you were at the $5 table. Back then, that was, you know, that was the smallest, a $5 table. And as you became proficient and you found, I don't want to say success, right? But, you know, you, you, you can handle making a $5 bet and $20 bet and things like that. You quickly looked around the room to see... Where was the next table, right? Where was the $15 bet or the $25 bet? And of course, things just scale. Like in a business, you go from five to a $10 table, 15, 25, 100. And then maybe you get a, you, you know, you're, you're big enough, right? Where you get a table, you say, hey, listen, I want to reserve this. No players whatsoever. So again, it is so important that you understand who's around you. You know, are they pushing you? Are they motivating you to take those steps to believe in yourself? Or are you surrounded by people that say, don't do that, Right. You, you, you're going to lose. It's too much risk. Those people will surely keep you down. Let me fast forward. Uh, you know, now I'm in my late teens. And of course, I'm taking a, a trip to uh, Las Vegas with my parents. And uh, but I just it wasn't, you know, regular, just little Greg there. It was Greg the adult. You know, my, my parents actually had put a fake beard on me. And uh, boy, uh, you know, I don't know if it was... Uh, a good thing, a bad thing. It was just a thing. Actually, you know what? It was just a thing. It was a journey, right? A moment in time in my journey uh, of life uh, that led to a lot of discovery. But what I discovered was the craps table, right? Walking around very confident with my, uh, my beard on. And I see this table, right? A lot of people just jumping and screaming. And I, I you know, I, I find a spot and I just get right there. And, you know, the dealer says, how, you know, how can I help? I said, I've never played the game. He says, just throw your money, right? Throw your money on the table. And uh, boy, that's where everything, you know, a single roll sparked a lifelong chase for me. And, you know, the, the initial success, right, 
in my in my gambling. And what I mean by that is I threw a, I, you know, I rolled for the first time. It was a 53 minute roll. And at the end of that, I finally crapped out. Everybody was hugging me, clapping. And I was like a celebrity. And, you know, that was my initial success, right? With gambling. And then, you know, these guys are good at what they do. They do their jobs very well. You you get assigned, even though I wasn't even 21, you get assigned a, a casino host, uh, you know, whatever tickets you want, whatever it is you want, free rooms. If you, you if you want to use the, you know, the limo, everything is there. It's like a drug, you know, dealer, right? They keep pushing and giving you a little bit more. And the, the equation here is the initial success in business can be intoxicating, much like winning, like a winning streak in gambling. However, True success isn't sporadic, you know, a win here and there, but it's a consistent performance and growth. So what do I mean by that? I never threw another 53 minute roll, right? It's not, it's not predictable. I didn't do anything that I can measure. That was just kind of pure random luck once in a lifetime for me, right? And me being caught in the casino's embrace, I, again, I was seduced by the trappings of you know, now, now I became right 20. Now I'm 21. Now I can actually go. I have no worries, right? About, Hey, can I see your ID or any of that stuff? I became just trapped by the VIP lifestyle. And in business, when we have, you know, short-term wins, right? In terms of, you know, something happened that you cannot predict something happened that wasn't because of something that you did. Sometimes we're paralyzed now and we're just waiting to see, hey, when is that going to come? When is that million dollar deal going to come again? When is that $10 million deal going to come again? And it doesn't come because it wasn't part of our plan. We can't predict it, right? So we also, so in business, short-term success, short-term wins, they're great. We'll take it, right? But we have to, we have to understand that true success in business is long-term. In business, we have to be aware of, you know, shortcuts. We're always trying to find the quick deal, the easy deal, and the fast deal. True growth requires investment and outstanding effort, right? I don't think that in today's world, so competitive with social media or anything like that, that, that good is good enough anymore. It's outstanding, not perfect. Perfect is paralysis. Perfect would be waiting for everything to line up again so I get another 53-minute roll. Perfect is for everything to line up again so that you get that $10 million deal that you weren't even looking for to fall right on your lap, right? So what seems to be good often comes with some serious hidden costs, long-term, outstanding effort in your business, investing in your business, and time is going to be the best uh, way for you to build a, a fantastic business for yourself. And in order to have a good business for yourself, you have to get into the habit of looking at your numbers being so organized that it's just, it's incredible. As a matter of fact, today, my office shared with me a statement, a credit card statement from a client. It's a Chase credit card. And at the bottom, this is something we noticed at the bottom, it said, this is a business card. It is not intended for personal use. This is something new, right? Everybody's, everybody's talking the same game. There's a lot of compliance out there. If you don't think that the forces are, you know, getting together to make sure that we can pick off this or that to see who's doing it right and who's doing it wrong, you're going to be mistaken. It's critical to be so organized in your numbers because it's going to open up your eyes of what you're doing, what you're not doing, what you could do better and where the improvements are at. You know, on one of those, you know, eventful trips to Vegas, I was, you know, just routinely packing almost nothing because I, you know, for me, it was like, I got to get to Vegas. I got to get to the tables and I was packing you know, another week into Vegas. And uh, that moment for me when I was packing, I just, I, it was like an epiphany that, that hit me, leading me to the realization that the thrill was no longer the win, but it was the chase, right? I wasn't even, it wasn't no longer about winning, whether I won, you know, 5,000 or 15,000 or whatever it was. It was just the, the chase. It was a, an adre adrenaline that I was after. And success in business often requires a momentum of reflection to reassess goals, right? So what happened to me was on that trip, before I got there, something spoke to me and I said, let me look at my numbers. I was already a CPA. I was successful. I was making money and I knew that I was making money, but I wasn't paying attention to the constant zero, right? In my bank account. It was just, it's like a petty cash fund. You'd replenish it to use it, replenish it to use it. And you know, that eventful day I, I stopped for a minute and I said, let me look and see what, I, what am I doing here? And I, back then, right, we have paper bank statements, you know, and I took all my bank statements out. 
and I started, you know, my checks came with the statement. So I took all my checks out and I put them in order and I was, you know, I, I listed all my, my checks and all the income and things like that. And boy, I got, I, I just, it was like a two by four that poof, just whacked me across the head when I realized that, I don't know, 60, 80%, maybe even more of the checks that I had written were to pay off markers um, at the casino. It wasn't until that moment that I said, I'm, I'm building these casinos instead of building my own, my own goals, my own dreams, my own, my own fortunes, right? So we have to remember that, you know, success in business is always requires a reflection to assess our goals and strategies. We, we have to make sure, are we excited with the goals that we wrote down at the beginning of the year? Because sometimes we're just, we're writing stuff that we don't even want, we don't even need, we don't even, it doesn't even inspire us. So we have to check those and make sure that what, you know, the reason we're going to be getting up and working long hours and strategizing and, and, and sacrificing not only our lives, but maybe those loved ones around us is because there's something there that's going to excite us, guys. So it's so important to reflect on those goals and the strategies behind them, right? The what, where, who, how, and why, right? That we're going to do what we're going to do. And that's going to help you, listen, not chase the wind of your business. Like today, I'm, uh, today I, I sold something, tomorrow I didn't. It's going to allow you to focus on building sustainable value within you. So what I want to point out here is instead of chasing, right, the excitement, the lights, the thrill, the drug of the VIP, and I channeled, you know, my analytical skills into my career as a CPA, turning, you know, a, a story of potential ruin, because that's 100% where, where I was headed, into a story of redemption, right? And in business, you have to leverage your skills, your experiences, even those from failure, right? If from failure, there's massive opportunities. If we look, if we unpack the failure, what happened here, right? And we learn the lesson and we improve from that. That is okay. Failures are good when we learn from them, right? It's going to allow us to pivot and find new paths to success. We bury our head in the sand, right? And we don't look at all the mishaps and the failures. Boy, we're going to repeat the cycle and the cycle and the cycle. And what was it for me? It was decades, decades of the chase of the thrill, of the adrenaline, right? And it wasn't until that one weekend that I said, let me look for whatever reason to this day, I don't know what it was, but I said, let me look at my bank statements. And um, I looked at that and I, I, I mean, I, I get the chills because I remember it so vividly and my life changed uh, forever on that day. So remember, every setback is simply a setup for your next comeback, your next opportunity, and your next big win. So from your journey, all you have to do is learn the importance of adapting your strategies, right? And that's the importance of looking to see what's working. How well is it working? Is it not working? We scrap things, right? Or, or things that we're not doing well. We just have to look within and look at our skill set and say, how do I get better at this, right? The value of perseverance and the power of self-belief is going to be your best friend. And that's why it's so important, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is we have to be surrounded by those, those risk takers, those bold innovators that are gonna tell us, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And that's how you're gonna win. Success in, biz in business is a lot, it's a lot like gambling. Take it from me. It requires when, you know, when you've been beat, when you need to fold, right? And that's, that's the truth in business, right? We have a product or we have a service that somehow we become you know, just enamored with, we fall in love with it. But the only way to know, is it working or is it not working, is to look at the numbers, right? What did I sell? What is it costing me? Is this viable? What are my customers saying? And it's not about scrapping something and giving up. It's about reinventing, right? Reinventing that product or that service or yourself to make the one little tweak that you have to make so that it is an amazing product or service. So unlike gambling, business, Success is built on strategic planning, execution, and the ability to learn from both wins and losses. Gambling is pure chance. When you go to Vegas or any other areas, those amazing casinos with those wonderful floors and decorations, they're built by skill set, analytical planning, and execution. Unfortunately, our money is not built is, is that we're giving away. There's no planning there. It's all chance. It's all, you know, 100% risk falling off with no, you know, no bungee cord. So remember, execution and planning your business is going to be the way you're going to win. So today, I not only enjoy personal financial freedom, you know, as a for myself, mentoring other you know entrepreneurs. I love guiding people to make informed, strategic business decisions, and the best way is with proper structure and 
organization. True success is going to transcend from your own personal achievement. You know, people want to hang around with other successful people. And when that happens, you know, your, your, your circle keeps growing and growing and opportunities continue to unfold right before your very eyes. So it's about the legacy you build and the impact that you have on others. We're leaving an example. We're leaving a legacy behind that people can say, I can take this to the next level. I appreciate what was done here, right? So share your journey, right? The wins, the losses. You can inspire somebody, you know, from the next generation, the next group of entrepreneurs that are around you. Let them know that everything is possible. No limits. Let them know that they're, right, we're going to have failures. But by learning from the failures, we're going to win really, really big. So my tale from Vegas to victory reminds me of the greatest risks often lead to the most rewarding journeys. In business as in life, it's not about the hand you're dealt, but how you play the cards.